All right, I'm gonna film my PM routine. I actually am kind of doing this impromptu because what I realized is I am out of a few of my normal things. And so I thought, oh, well, I'm replacing them with some other things that I'm testing out. I thought it might be fun to kind of share those things with you and uh, kind of go through the whys. I am 50 years old and I have a textured skin. I have hyperpigmentation. I am perimenopausal. And really I would say my main struggles are dehydration along with uh, hyperpigmentation. I thought it would be you know, maybe um, beneficial to see why I choose the things that I do. I'm going to even show you um, putting in my um, hair growth foam just so you see how I do that. Also, I'll show you my eyebrows and my eyelash stuff that I do, just the whole gamut. Okay, so first thing that I do is I currently am using a micellar water to kind of remove the initial layer of stuff. So I've got CeraVe and I also have Bioderma. Honestly, a micellar water is a relatively new obsession of mine. I have it from a couple other brands that are a lot more expensive and truthfully, I cannot tell the difference. These two are affordable and they're good. So um, yeah, I mean, I reach for them all the time. I travel with micellar water. I think that it is a great way to, um, you know, it's great for prep before I do a device. It's great for getting this first layer of makeup off. It's, uh, it's just a good thing to have around. So literally you guys, it is this simple. And honestly, I actually kind of try to get as much off as I can with this first pass so that, um, my cleanser doesn't have to do as much work. And I really try to get, I mean, it's pretty gross, right? I really try to get up here if I'm not going to wash my hair because I know that I get bronzer right into my hairline and stuff. And I just try to get that clean, especially because I know I'm going to put um, the hair foam in and I just want it all very clean. So I will do my uh, actual cleanse off camera not going to make you watch me wash my face. Um, but what I am using for that pretty consistently is the prequel Glenzer. This is my second cleanse. This is often my only cleanse. If I don't want to do um, the micellar water, I will just use this. Sometimes I'll use it twice. Sometimes this ends up being my entire body wash. This is my hand wash sometimes. It's just so good. I've talked about this a couple times. It is a lot of glycerin. So for me, it doesn't strip my skin or anything like that. So this is what I will go use right now and then I'll be right back. Okay, I am cleanse step. Next thing I do is my Revive. This is my AM and PM step right after I cleanse. Sometimes I do use an exfoliating uh, toner. I really, really like the Biologique Recherche P50-1970. Sometimes I do that. I do that in the morning. I will wait a little while before I do this. Um, sometimes I might do a spray essence of some sort. But usually what I try to do is get this onto my skin very first because it's the thing that I really want to work on my skin alone first. It is um, growth factors, exosomes, lots and lots of humectants, lots of really good skin loving ingredients, and it has arbutin in it. So arbutin is going to help with um, pigment inhibiting. So it looks like this. See? It looks like it's a gel almost, but honestly, it breaks down into somewhat of a serum and soaks into your skin quickly. Boom. So now what I usually do is I wait at least five minutes. I want to give some of these kind of fickle slash um, fragile ingredients a little bit of time to just sit and do a little bit of a job before they are um, assaulted by the rest of my routine. While I wait, sometimes what I will do is a couple of the things that I don't really mind, I don't think are gonna interfere with this step. So this is when I will do my Obagi um, eye eyebrow, and all I do is I kind of mush it in so that I can feel the bristles touching my skin and then I will comb through. So, and then I re-dip for the other eyebrow. This stuff works so well, you guys. It is prostaglandin-based, and it definitely helps with 
re, you know, thickness and growth and encouraging the eyebrow hairs that have miniaturized to grow again. And so you can really see some major growth with this. I love it. And this does last a really long time. I only use it one time a day and it's usually at night. If I happen to forget at night, which happens sometimes, I'll use it in the morning. I just kind of switch off. The next thing that I will do while I'm just waiting for that, um, I will put on the Revive Lash Serum. This is a prostaglandin free lash serum has all kinds of good stuff and it has the stuff that studies show help with eyelash growth and thickness and it's huge this thing lasts like six months i only use it on my eyelashes i don't use it on my eyebrows um but you can you can totally use this on both eyelashes and eyebrows um I love it and I love that it's prostaglandin free. So this one has prostaglandins, this one does not, but I'm okay with the prostaglandins on my eyebrows and on my scalp. I just don't want them around my eyeballs. Okay, so then I'm gonna give it like two more minutes and then I will be back. Okay, next up is gonna be Needleless Serum. I'm using it at night right now because I am out of my peptide moisturizer and this has in it all kinds of really good nourishing things and because I'm not gonna use my peptide moisturizer, I figure I'll get this in. At night is when I really like to feed my skin. I'm totally okay if I go to bed with, you know, like I have a lot of moisture, I'm kind of caked up. I'm gonna put a pipette first on my neck And then move to my face and it you it's not honestly rocket science but the ingredients in this one are so good I have used needleless serum after laser treatments I have used it after many 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 different in office kind of like ablative or non ablative um, things that really kind of get your skin and you're you're kind of inflamed and this Honestly, it's hydrating, it feeds your skin nourishing ingredients, it's healing. It's been a favorite of mine for a really long time and I have it always somewhere in my routine. Now I am going to um, put on an eye cream. I use the HPR, I've been using this since they launched it. I really like it. This is, I think, my second bottle. Honestly, I um, sometimes I get skincare and I will meet a friend like traveling or something and I give them my skincare and then I rebuy it. So I think this is my second bottle. It's probably really like my third or fourth, but I think I gave some of the other ones away for people to have to try. <laughs> anyway, I do about a half a pump, which is kind of hard to gauge, but I do about a half a pump and I, um, you know, the whole ring finger thing, you could do that if you want to, but just be gentle. Anyway, I put this all around my ocular area and the deal with the HPR is it is Gran Active Retinoid, which is an active form of vitamin A, but it's super duper gentle. So it's really perfect for the eye area. Um, I've been asked about it for the whole face. And if you are sensitive, um, finding a an HPR or Grand Active Retinoid for the face is not a bad idea. For me, I almost feel like, um, even though it's active, I don't feel like I get as good of results on my face with Grand Active Retinoid as I do with retinaldehyde. So for me, it's perfect for around the eyes because it's gentle, active, and it's vitamin A. Um, there's also all kinds of really great ingredients in there for the eye area. Um, and it should help with fine lines. It should help with hyperpigmentation. I just really, really like the consistency of it. It is definitely my nighttime eye cream. Okay, so my next step is going to be my vitamin A, and that is right now because I'm out of my deuterium. But again, I'm out of my deuterium actually because I gave it away. I was traveling with a friend and um, I wanted her to try it and so I just said, just take it home. Well, I got home and I decided because I picked up a bunch of stuff from Niche Beauty Lab and they have a retinaldehyde and it looks absolutely beautiful. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this a chance before I reorder my natrium. This one is $21 and it's 1.69 ounces. It looks really, really nice. I've just been using it just a little amount of time, but um, I think it's gonna be a really great budget option for retinaldehyde. So if you are somebody who likes retinaldehyde and you want a budget option, natrium is excellent and then Niche Beauty Lab. So I'm gonna show you, this might need to be a little bit too much. That probably is too much. I probably won't use all of that. Now, it's very, it looks thick, but it's actually kind of um, a mid-weight, so it's not too heavy. Now we're gonna just dot it 
all over like this. Now for me, I can use this down my neck. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm not gonna use all of that, see that? It's really important not to go overboard with your vitamin A or else you can get some irritation. I haven't found that this is irritating even a little bit and I haven't found that it's drying either. So then I just put this on. Now, the next thing that I typically do on my face and neck and hands is uh, my Soothe and Recovery from Dermatology. It's the thing I slather on every night. And um, I like to give my retinaldehyde a little bit of time to just be before I put on the Soothe and Recovery. So what I will do right now is I will do my Revive the um, hair foam. Now, this is a Revive night because um, I just like to use the Revive one or two nights and then the Grande hair one or two nights. I'm kind of rotating them. I did a whole video on hair prostaglandin, serums that work, serums that don't. I did a, a corresponding blog on the serums that I've tried that work, that don't, you know, my opinions on all of that. And honestly, this Revita Lash Foam is definitely my favorite. I have to say though, the thing that I hate about it is how fast I go through it. And so I'm trying really, really hard to not overuse it. And it's very hard not to overuse it. Um, if you've had this, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm doing my best, but I really want people to know that because this is expensive and it does seem, they say on the website that you get two and a half months out of it. I, I, I don't know on what, in what reality anybody gets two and a half months out of this. And so always, always, always get this on discount. Don't ever pay full price because at full price, this is 1.9 ounces and, um, it's a foam. So you shake it up and then you'll see how I put it on. But, um, it's just too expensive that way. It's just so expensive, but it does work. It really, really does work. So what I do, and I'm gonna have to use, I have a mirror right behind this camera, you guys, because this is something I can't really do that well <laughs> with the monitor. So what I do is I get in, I make a part, and I just make little tiny, and I put my finger here, and you have to put your finger because it will run. And so you gotta be really careful because you don't wanna waste it. It's like freaking gold, you know, it's precious. So I go about half an inch apart and then I do the same thing. And I just do this, but put your finger there because that runs forward. And that's part of the way that I'm trying to not overuse it. I'm trying to let it move around my scalp a little bit before I rub it in too much. And then same thing, I go another, you know, half an inch or so and, oh, I didn't bring, shoot, I didn't bring down my um, massaging tool. Something else that I definitely do after I get this in is I use that little $6 tool and I massage my scalp. I could do that beforehand too, but this is essentially, I go all through this kind of area with the foam. I test, I'm testing other um, hair products still. I'm still testing a bunch of other things in this area, so I don't really go that far down. Not to mention, this stuff is so expensive that if I tried to do my whole head, um, it would be really, really expensive. So maybe three. Always kind of try not to overdo the very front because it will run. And I can't tell you the number of times it's run onto my face, which I don't care about it running on my face. I just don't want to waste it. So, oh, see, there it was going to run on my face. And that's about as far down as I ever go. In fact, that might even be a tiny bit farther. I usually reserve all of these sides for other serums that I'm testing. Okay, so if I had my massage tool, that's what I would be doing right now. Um, and I probably will um, add a little bit of the foam way back here, but I'm not going to make you sit and watch that. Then I will massage either with my fingers. I always end up, just wait, wait for it. You guys, that's what I go to bed looking like half the time. I go to get in bed and my husband's always like, <sighs> or if we pass, like going, I'm walking out of the bathroom and he's walking in like to brush his teeth. <laughs> it's, every night he's like, oh my gosh. Anyway, I do try sometimes to not scare him by, you know, kind of 
making myself look a little bit, but what I want you to know is as wet as my hair is, when I wake up tomorrow morning, this just feels, it feels pretty good. It does not feel like there's a bunch of gunk in my hair, um, which is part of the reason why I really, really love the Revita Lash is the consistency and, um, what it doesn't do to my hair. Okay, so then the last thing that I do is always my Soothe and Recovery from Dermatology. I just love this. I love this lotion so much. It's one of my favorite, favorite um, skincare products of all time. It is like this. And you guys, I mean, I, I that's actually not an exaggeration of how much I use because I put it on my neck. I put it on my face. And I, when I say I slather it, I am not exaggerating. I put it on my hands. I just love it. Oh, I love it. And I rub it in, but I almost leave it like a masky kind of situation. And I just feel like I wake up and my skin is so soft in the morning. And because I have dry and dehydrated skin, to me, this is the, the must have. It's the must do. I mean, it's so important for me to try and retain as much water in my skin as possible and to really nourish it with soothing ingredients. More important for me and for a lot of us, I think, than even some of the active stuff is just to make sure we are respecting our barrier and really just nourishing the skin. So that is the last step that I do and that's it. That's the, that's my whole night routine. Now, one or two nights a week, I do kind of an overnight exfoliation. And typically that is either the Dermalect Sleep Serum, which I am also out of. And that one I am out of because I did give it away to somebody I was traveling with. Or I will use the Dermatology LA Refining Serum. This is lactic acid and it's really, really nice. It also has licorice, so it's brightening. I'll use one of the two of those and I will basically wash my face now I will always use this. I use this every a.m. p.m. first thing after I wash and then I will go in with either the um, sleep serum or right now it's the LA refining serum. So something that is going to exfoliate my skin overnight that's going to help to, you know, help with texture, going to help with tone, going to help with hyperpigmentation, but I try to keep it super duper simple. So wash, I'll put this on, let it sit for five minutes. I will put on whatever my overnight exfoliant is. So usually one of those two, but it could be anything. And then I will wait a little bit, just a little, just to give that a little bit of time to work. And then I will go in and slather on my Soothe and Recovery. And that is my whole routine a couple nights a week, one or two nights a week. I do have a night where I actually don't use the retinoid, where I just put on a bunch of hydration and a bunch of nourishing ingredients and I just give my skin a complete break from all like actives that are um, exfoliating or anything like that. And I know that my skin loves that too. So I do that sometimes too. Now, you know that I'm always testing stuff. So sometimes I will interchange one of these things with something else just to try a product or a brand or whatever. But this is kind of my core. This is kind of the things that I, I mean, some of the stuff I've been doing for years and years, and I just, I feel really good about it. I don't make these videos very often because not a lot changes. I don't, I don't switch it up as much as you might think. I do test things a lot, but not very many things make it into my permanent rotation where year after year I can still say, yep, I'm still using that. I There's just so many things that, and that's these things here. I think the essentials to take away from this are if you can at night, try and get in a vitamin A. I always say use a moisturizer. Clearly we want to wash our face every night, right? And as far as everything else is concerned, there's a lot of extras. The eyebrow is extra. The eyelashes are extra. The hair foam is extra. Nobody needs all that stuff. Those are just the things that I choose to do because nighttime is definitely the time for me when I kind of go all in. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next skincare video. Take care.